cash buyers for wholesale deals. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's episode. Hey, Mark Walters here. Before we jump in, if you need money for real estate investing or for your business, simply go to findprivatemoney.net and grab my free book called How to Find Millions in Private Money Loans. Thousands of people have gotten this. It's been incredibly popular and I wanna give it to you absolutely free. You can download it over at findprivatemoney.net. All right, let's talk about cash buyers for wholesale deals because we don't make money on the deal until we sell the deal. And a lot of times what we're trying to do is sell that deal fast to some kind of a wholesale situation and we need cash buyers to do that. So we're gonna be talking about a number of different sources of potential cash buyers, what to do with them once you've got them so you can market to them so that you can really create a, a cash buyer feeding frenzy, if you will, once you have new properties. Well, let's, first of all, let's uncover who is actively buying right now. Well, you can be going to a foreclosure auction and you can find a lot of cash buyers because you've got to have cash buyers at a foreclosure auction. Those could be people buying for themselves, for their own portfolio, or they could be flipping those properties to somebody else. And that then leads us into who might they be selling these properties to? Well, what about landlords? Landlords that are collecting properties in certain areas. Now that can be a business that is doing it. It could be a private individual that's doing it. Might even be hedge funds that's doing it. So when you can find out who these landlords are who are buying in certain zip codes that you're investing in, well, then you can be reaching out to them to see if they are looking for more property. If so, what kind? and of course, to get them onto your cash buyer list. So you can be sending out emails whenever you've got new properties available so that you can let all your cash buyers know, hey, this is available. If you want it, you're going to have to act fast, right? We're not going to say it as bluntly as that, but it's pretty much obvious. If you've ever been on a cash buyer list, you're going to get an email. Here's the property. Here's the information. And you know that you need to act quickly because once that property has gone, it's gone. So rental house landlords, just your typical type of landlord, you might go to a list broker of some kind, find absentee owners in a particular zip code, and maybe you could say, I want absentee owners that have owned this property for X amount of years. So obviously it's not somebody who just couldn't sell their house and they had to move because maybe they had a job transfer or something, couldn't sell their house and they plop somebody in the property for a short amount of time, you know, until they can sell the property. You know, they just didn't want to make two mortgage payments. So they rented the property out. If you get a list where the property has been owned for a number of years, and that would then uncover potentially somebody who's truly a landlord in that scenario, then you can be reaching out to them via direct mail, letting them know that you are looking for uh, buyers of properties in that zip code that you can be supplying properties to. And if they're looking to increase the amount of rental portfolio that they've got, that you are a good source for those kinds of deals. And then you can see if they contact you back or you can just direct them over to your webpage where they can get onto your email buyers list even better. So that's very low threshold kind of a, a scenario. Now, another type of rental owner, somebody who potentially is making even more money monthly and annually on their property rentals than just your basic rental house landlord would be somebody that is investing in properties to be able to list on an Airbnb type of site where they can charge a whole lot more money. Now, if you can be targeting in your overall marketing, be it social media and, you know, other places online where you are looking for Airbnb buyers, well, it could be that that property that you've got that they really want, they're willing to pay more for it than your average wholesaler because they know how to make more money on that deal than say just a rental house landlord. So if you target both of those kind of landlords, your basic rental house landlord and your Airbnb property owner type of a landlord scenario, well, those can be two prime sources for you. Also, rehabbers can be good. Rehabbers are always looking for properties that they can go and fix up and then sell. They might have their own type of a wholesale buyer's list. That's fine. Either way, they're always looking for good properties. So if you're able to find properties that are 
uh, low enough priced for you and they need a lot of work, if you reach out to different rehabbers in your area that you know are doing a lot of deals and you can be just reaching out to rehabbers or start to market to rehabbers and then get them onto your buyers list so that when you've got properties that need some work, you know, it's not one of those things that you have to pass on because you don't do the work. You think, hey, well, I just want to find the properties and then flip them to people that are looking for those type of fixer upper properties. Well, rehabbers can be really good. You can also, if you're looking for cash buyers, you can be searching or having a title company or a realtor or somebody who you know can research past sales in a particular zip code or zip codes. And if you can be then having them target cash purchases, all cash purchase that happened at some kind of a discount and then find out who those players are. Chances are it's going to be a company, could be an individual, could be an LLC, you never know. And if you can find out who they are, you can then kind of do some uh, due diligence, see if they own other properties or if they have purchased other properties in that zip code or surrounding area in a certain amount of time uh, recently, well, then they might be active cash buyers as well because the proof is in the pudding. And you can be doing a search within about a mile to three miles of the radius from where you are actively pursuing property leads. Then you can be marketing to those kind of buyers that are paying cash. And another way that you can do that is buy a cash buyer list in a particular zip code or area that have been buying, you know, in the last one to three years, ones that may have then more properties, like I said, property purchases. And then, you know, you've got somebody who is active. Now you can also be marketing on websites like uh, Craigslist, Backpage, Facebook groups, all kinds of groups that are out there. You can be looking for active cash buyers and then simply send them to your webpage that captures their information. So that way, whenever you've got a property, all you have to do is send an email out with some information on it, a link over to that property, and then you know, let the games begin. Now, once you have cash buyers, you know, as far as people that maybe you're gonna be doing business with on a very regular basis, you wanna cultivate a relationship over a number of years, this wouldn't be so much the cattle call of a huge email list per se, but you've got somebody that you're talking with and you wanna make sure that they're not just going to uh, spin your wheels and waste a lot of time. You can ask for deal references, you know, how many properties have you bought lately? How many properties have you bought in this area? What are you looking for? You know, you might even be able to then search your recorder's uh, website and just see, is this business, is this entity buying? Have they been buying recently? Where have they been buying? Things like that. You can also ask for a proof of funds to make sure that they actually have what it takes to make the deal go together. Now, obviously, you're, you're going to want to be sensitive when you're building a relationship in the beginning. These aren't the things you're going to ask everybody. I mean, if you're doing kind of blanket marketing to get people on your email list, it's not like you're asking that to everybody. This would be more of a selective one-on-one -on -one type of a scenario where you're talking to somebody and you're trying to build that rapport. You can be letting them know that, you know, you, you've got properties that you're actively finding in certain zip codes. You'd like to be able to find X amount of buyers in that particular zip code and you're just trying to find the real players so that if they want to be, you know, on that very small list of people that you're letting them know about certain properties that you've got first, let's say, then, you know, you want to vet them and make sure that there's somebody you can actually close. So they might be a little more willing to give you that information so that they might be one of the first people that find out about a deal. It just depends how you want to market. If you want to market to everybody on your list, well, you might not need to do what I just said so much. If you aren't cultivating an email list, you're just cultivating relationships that, you know, you know, you need to have people that can actually close fast. Well, then, you know, that latter type of uh, criteria, you might be starting to cultivate that scenario where these are people that are going to have to prove themselves a little bit if they want to be one of the first people to receive information about a deal that you've got. Um, another thing is you can ask these people, and this is kind of twofold, what kind of investor friendly title companies they're using. Obviously, if they're not doing any deals, they may not know where, you know, the investor friendly title companies are. If they are doing deals, they can say, oh yeah, I'm doing it over here. Oh really? Okay, great. And then you might even be able to follow up there as well. Again, two completely different philosophies on cultivating 
and handling cash buyers. So the choice is really yours. A lot of people like it where all your marketing is going to be pointing people to a web page that's going to let them know that you are building a, a buyer's list there. And if they want to get on the buyer's list so that you know, they know about a deal, they just need to give their email address. If you don't go about it that way and you're just trying to do some one-on-one -on -one conversation so that you build the relationship that can go on for years and years, well, then you, know, you might have it be a bit more proprietary. If you want to get this, I need to know that you know, you're actively buying. So with that information, you've got a number of different ways that you can be finding cash buyers for wholesale deals and then how to market to them. If you've got just a few people, you might call them on the phone or send them an email. If you've got a huge buyer's list, you're sending an email. It could be that you've got certain relationships with that you want to call them up and say, hey, I've got this deal. Do you want it? Okay, you don't want it. You do want it. Or you've got until five o'clock to let me know and then I'm going to let the whole list know about it. You know, that kind of thing. That might get them to act faster. That can be particularly helpful if those people have the money, have the means to be able to pull the trigger fast. They're going to appreciate that they're one of the first people that find out about it. So you might just have a handful of people like that and then let them know, look, if I don't hear back from you by five, I'm going to send it out to the list. So there's a hybrid of those two different strategies. I hope that helps. If you ever find yourself needing money for deals, definitely get my free book, How to Find Millions in Private Money Loans. I'm Mark Walters. Until next time, I'll share more with you soon.